Sorry for the lightness clickbait, but in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can upgrade your laptop CPU. And if you want to find out, just, I guess, stick till the end. <laughs> see by the title of this video I am going to be upgrading my laptop CPU um, and it's actually got an i5 processor specifically this one and these are all the specification of this laptop it's quite an old one I got it five years ago and in this package is the CPU we're gonna be using to swap the old the one which is already in there um, this is an i7 one got it on a mail. I've really been waiting for this one, so let's hop right in. So this is the package I got here. Um, I know this is probably not the best unboxing knife, but I guess that's what we have here. I have not actually opened this uh, before. Uh, there might be a potato in this. There we go. This should be the processor. Okay, and there it is, our new CPU. There you go, have a look at that. Let me show you the other side. Pretty much a processor. So this is an i7-3632QM processor, and we're replacing the i5-3230M processor with it. You can see the, the differences between them. But yeah, pretty much should be an upgrade. So before we go ahead and actually do the upgrade, we just have to do a little bit of research whether the CPU is actually going to work on our uh, laptop. Yeah, program that you're going to need is called Hardware Info 64. Um, you can download it, it's free, just Google Hardware Info as you see it right here. It should be the first one to appear. And when you download it, just open it and the thing we are looking for is this, the platform right here. So this is basically the socket of your CPU. So after you know what that is, you have to just go online and Google your socket, the same socket right here. You're probably gonna end up on this site or some other but it doesn't really matter and here you can see all the supported processors for this socket but just because it says they're supported it doesn't mean they're gonna work in my case the processor i'm using is this one the i5 3230m and we want to replace it like I, I mean i've done my research and i i know what i'm gonna replace it with but you have to find your cpu here you have to like go just look to the end where it says tdp watts you don't want to pick anything different than whatever your tdp is so in my case it's 35 watts i'm just gonna stick with 35 watts obviously there are higher ones 45 and I don't know if you can really, but just for the sake of it, just stick with 35, if it's 35. So what I'm going to do, this site is actually really helpful. Yeah, I can just click here and it's going to sort them by TDP, but you can also sort them by the turbo frequency, aka the max frequency your laptop can achieve. You just have to play with it till you find the right one. When you go here, now you can see the highest turbo frequency that any 35 watt CPU has. After you do this, these are actually dual core CPUs, so we don't want that. We want a uh, quad core, obviously. After you do this, you find what is the best CPU for you. In my case, it's the i7-3632QM. So you might have actually seen that it says that already here that's because i've already done it you know it works but yeah after you find the cpu 
you want to choose just go ahead look up on ebay see if they have it if they're not somebody's probably selling it already if you don't find it you can always go for the sec like the previous one like this one but just keep in mind to that the tdp has to stay the same so i actually got this one got this cpu right here and after you know what the cpu you're looking for you know it's on ebay everything that you'll it's not the end still haven't seen you don't know if your bios is gonna work like this so far you know uh it's gonna work like with the hardware on the hardware side you also need to know if it's gonna work on the software side of things so you need to know if your BIOS is gonna play with this CPU. So what you want to do now actually is go back to hardware info and um, go ahead and check and see your BIOS. Go on motherboard and look for BIOS. So when you have your BIOS version you want to google that so in my case i just googled the update because this is a sony via laptop obviously just look up the update up and see applicable models these are all the laptops that use this bios and all of them have different cpus obviously so you just want to find one which has the cpu you need a funny thing is actually my laptop is not listed here if it's listed here that's great but if it's not i mean there's probably some still some chance that it might work but it better be somewhere around here so i came across this laptop and i googled it and here is the user manual of that very same laptop it actually looks kind of similar so in here in the specifications on there the processor let me zoom on that up to Intel Core i5-3632QM, which is the processor we are looking for. Now we know it's gonna work on the hardware side of things and on the software side of things. So we should be good to go. Like this point, if you're sure it's gonna work, just you can go ahead and buy it. And now let's go to the actual this is simply an installation part of this project. Yeah, let's see what are the things we're gonna need. I'm just gonna safely put this to the side. So I have this set of screwdrivers. I mean, a lot of different uh, standards, you know, we got Phillips screwdrivers, like all the different types you could use. It's like five dollars in Amazon, so yeah, just pick it up. You never know what it might come handy, but yeah, a lot of screws involved in this project, so we'll be unscrewing a lot of stuff. Uh, I suggest also bringing one of these because it actually has a magnetic tip, so you can actually put this like this one doesn't have yours, might have, but yeah, just. This one is too big anyway to work, but yeah, the magnetic tip is gonna help us not lose the screws. And um, ideally you'd have a uh, magnetic tray, you know, one of these, but like, I'm just gonna use a mark for just for the sake of it. Cause I wanna want somewhere to like keep the screws safe. That's pretty much everything that you're gonna need. So first to start, you have to turn off your computer obviously haven't done that also unplug the battery and remove it just set it to the side just hold on to your power button for like 10 seconds I mean some people say 30 seconds but I guess just 10 seconds is enough just to get rid of all the, the uh, electricity if there's any left in there after you've done that um, we have to turn it around the back I'm just gonna remove my SD card because we don't really need that and yeah we just have to unscrew a lot of screws just gonna remove this panel this is 
is for the RAM. Um, this laptop is actually that has been thought put into this. Like I can easily access the RAM, uh, my SSD, and yeah, it's just I don't need to put the like get rid of the whole back. I just need to remove this, and I can swap my RAM if I want to. be all the screws pretty much um, so what you want to do now is like um, try and open it um, like be try not to break anything as much as you can but also try and open it it's like you should do something where, like something in between the first time you do this it's probably gonna be harder but I've done this before so Okay, another screw. So, yeah, this is pretty much the laptop itself. Um, this is the RAM. Um, this is the Wi Fi card. And uh, so, this here is the CPU. This is the blow, the blowing like the cooler. And here we have the GPU. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the laptop itself. Um, don't try not to break anything. Don't touch anything if you don't know what it is. But like, if you have this copper heat sink, it just basically is going to lead you to your CPU. So that's where the CPU is. Um, so here we have four more screws that we need to unscrew, obviously. Uh, at this point, you just want to be a little bit more careful because, yeah, all the good stuff is in here. You don't really uh, remove these, they just stay, but you can unscrew them. Yeah, we just need to uh, unscrew this as well. And here, too. That should pretty much be the heat sink out, but don't pull it away that fast. Just try and see if it's okay, gently. But there is also this connector here. Leave it to the side like this. Um, but this here is pretty much the CPU now. Um, you cannot pull it away still. Um, there's a locking mechanism as there is on um, desktop CPUs. It's right here, it's this one. Just have to rotate it um, 180 degrees until you see it move all the way. And then you can pretty much remove your CPU. So this is what we were after. Yep, this is the CPU. Um, you can see the old um, thermal paste in here. I bought some thermal paste as well. So we're gonna, obviously. But yeah, we can safely put this to the side. So to be honest, I haven't really put much thought on how to remove thermal paste and just had to look up a quick video on Linus's channel. Obviously, shout out to Linus at this point. Um, so he did a test of all the different household items that he just tried to 
clean thermal paste with and um, I saw that their hand sanitizer like these one were alcohol based or this one is ethanol based pretty much do their job just pour a little bit on it and wait for it to do something and then just gonna wipe it off that's what I'm gonna do with the heat sink as well and the GPU I'm just gonna clean them up put some new thermal paste Noctua NTH1 which is a very well-known one quite respected brand um, and thermal paste as well so you can't really go wrong with this one it was just like six pounds on Amazon can't really go wrong with that so just recommend this one and also I will follow the instructions right here and there we go it's as good as new as you can see it should be good let's actually go ahead and clean the other stuff that we got um, the GPU it's very clean to me um, yeah now I just have to clean the GPU as well so well, this is 1000% the GPU at this point because like AMD on top of it uh, let's see what it says actually on here on this one let's open this this is our thermal paste here press a small drop four to five millimeters diameter of NTH1 onto the center of the heat spreader Put a heat sink and onto the CPU, turn it back and forth a few times in order to spread the paste. Fasten the heat sink and you're done. Okay, let's just put the CPU back inside. And I'm also going to fasten it. And then I'm just gonna put a little drop as it says. When you tighten this up, just try not to overdo it because um, too much pressure is also not good for the CPU. But low, like not enough pressure is also not good for your CPU. So just try and feel it. When it gets hard, just you know that this is the point and you shouldn't do pull any much further. I'm just doing it diagonally as you can probably see. When you feel it's tight enough just you know that's pretty much it. Um, and we should be good actually. This should be it. When that's done, you can just put the back cover to its place. Just give it a little help to get in place so that all the caps are in. Just when you feel, like don't push it too hard, but just when you make sure it's the way it's supposed to be. And now we go back to putting everything back in. So everything is back where it was supposed to be. Let's just uh, bring back the battery. So we're good to go. Let's actually see if it boots up. And hit post it, so that's a good sign. Let's see if it actually loads up in Windows. Um, I don't know if you can see that. 
but yeah. Yep, there we go. So it works. Let's see what the CPU is. There we go. A Core i7 3632QM, eight threads. Oh yeah, baby, we are in the game. We're in the end game now. Wow, it actually worked, yeah. So, it's time to benchmark now and see the results. There you go. That's pretty much it for the benchmark. I think they speak for themselves. Single core performance is pretty much the same, while the multi-core performance is at best double or there is some kind of an improvement. But also what we can see from the benchmarks is that um, games do, do not necessarily benefit that much from the uh, two extra cores. That might be due to the GPU because as you saw, it's pretty much soldered to the motherboard and we cannot upgrade that. It's a Radeon HD 7600. It is overclocked to the maximum point where games are stable. And you might say, well, that wasn't worth it. Why would you freaking do this? Well, as you saw, a multi-threaded synthetic benchmarks, the score is nearly double, which means theoretically half the amount of time to render videos, to export images, artwork in uh, Illustrator or InDesign. And this is pretty much what I'm doing right now with this laptop. Um, as you know, I'm studying graphic design here in the UK. This is actually my very first video. By the way, I know I haven't been uploading for quite, a, quite some time now. So, I'm sorry about that, and um, yeah, I'll try to upload more. 
but it's just that I've been busy uh, doing, like, working on projects for uni. Yeah, I might not be spending that much time on YouTube, but I'm not thinking of quitting YouTube. Just because there are no videos, that doesn't mean I'm not still, like, working on something or doing something about YouTube. Um, I have a lot of draft projects that are just waiting for me to start editing them. Hopefully, some of you still stick around to watch my videos. And I'm just thankful for you guys. Even if there are like 10 people who would watch my videos, that's still something. There you go. If you want to do it, go ahead. Uh, I just love tinkering with stuff and playing with electronics, even though I might break it and it might never turn on. It's still fun. So if you have an old laptop, and you want to do this, maybe don't buy such an expensive CPU, CPU like the i7. Uh, maybe you're upgrading for a Pentium or whatever, an i3 to an i5. That seems like a lot more reasonable uh, upgrade in terms of money and like uh, if it's just a hobby thingy. But yeah, definitely do it. I hope uh, I helped you. Uh, if you have questions, please do leave them down below in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. Uh, if uh, if I can, and uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please make sure to do so. I, uh, as I said, I will upload more videos in the coming future, hopefully. So subscribe, join the RAF Army, hit that notification bell, uh, and uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope I helped. This video was interesting, um, and yeah, guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.